Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to this video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. Today, we're stitching our last nine patch block, and we're going to fill it with a cool design called Wiggly Pasta. So let's get started. Okay, so here's our nine patch block, and I've already stitched this in the ditch. I've just simply run around uh, these inner ditch lines, around the perimeter of the nine patch, and also hit these horizontal lines as well. And you are going to have to do a little travel stitching in order to ditch this completely. That's fine. Don't obsess about it. Uh, one thing you are going to notice, I have not marked my wiggly pasta. You see how these uh, A blocks, the A fabric blocks, are filled in with this wiggly wobbly design. This design is simple enough and the way it's overlapping, it's very forgiving of mistakes. So I'm going to encourage you not to mark it. I don't think it's necessary to mark it. Uh, instead, mark this outer line so that you have this clearly indicated on your block, but don't feel like you have to mark the wiggly pasta. It's really a very simple design, and we're going to stitch this in a really fluid way through the whole block. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. So I'm going to rotate this around, and I'm going to stitch from corner to corner with half of my wiggly pasta in this block. So basically all this is is just up and down wiggly U-shapes, coming down, swinging around, coming back up. I want to fill in that little corner area a little bit. It doesn't matter if you don't hit it, we're going to make a second pass through all of these squares. So now I'm going to shrink them down, just making those wiggly U shapes a little smaller, and I'm going to hit that point right there at the edge. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this more closely. You can see exactly where I'm at. Well, there's a lot of things I could do right here. I could travel stitch and stitch the opposite direction, or I could just simply keep going in this direction and not have to do any travel stitching at all. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep going this direction. More of those wiggly U shapes. And just a warning, if you aren't stitching this fast enough, meaning if your hands are moving fast but your machine is not keeping up with it, you might see loops on the back side of the quilt. You might look, it's called eyelashes. You might see eyelashes on the back side if your machine isn't running fast enough. Because this is one of those movements that's very easy for your hands to make. And more than likely, you're going to want to stitch this pretty fast. So make sure your machine is running at a speed that corresponds with that. Okay, so I'm right here. I'm going to travel stitch down and then work diagonally up to this next corner. So at this point, I'm overlapping the wiggly U-shapes from before. I'm going to stitch out, and the biggest thing with this is just try not to get too lost in it. it it's kind of easy to forget where you're going with all the lines overlapping one another. Just remember that you're aiming for that corner right here between the two piece squares, and I think that'll probably set you on the right track. There we go. And so, again, I'm just going to continue with that same direction, more wiggly shapes going into the square. So I'm going to continue to flow through all of these blocks, working just like this, and I'll speed up the camera now so that way you can see all of it in one pass. So here's our Wickly Pasta. You can see how this has filled in these A squares, these blue squares on my block. Uh, I really want to encourage you to kind of flow through this the same way I did and to not mark. You can see how easy this is. This is just Wickly U shapes. You don't need to mark it. You don't need to get obsessive about it because the way they overlap, the lines overlap, you're not going to be able to see any mistakes at all. 
You might be wondering about these empty black squares. We're not gonna put anything in these squares. And there's a couple different reasons for this. Uh, the one thing is the blue squares with the wiggly pasta, that can kind of tend to get a little dense with the lines of quilting pretty close together. So I felt like a good balance to that would be to not quilt anything in those black squares. It's okay to leave things open on your quilt. If you look at a quilt and you're like, well, I don't really want to quilt anything in that spot, that's okay. Surround it with other things. Play with that design. Um, what you leave open depends more on your batting than anything else. So let's say that I'm working on a 12 inch block and my batting that I'm using today is Quilter Stream Poly and it says quilting up to 10 inches. That means I need to keep my quilting lines within 10 inches, like maybe nine and a half inches apart. And that's gonna ensure that the batting doesn't shift and ripple and do funny things inside of the quilt. So if I got that 12 inch block, well, I can pretty much just stitch lines that are nine and a half inches apart and I'm fine. So understand that I can leave these little two inch blocks on this nine patch open and it's not gonna hurt anything. It's a design choice more than anything else. So you wanna kinda of pay attention to that. If you're working on a quilt that you wanna put minimal quilting on, make sure you're using a batting that has a high rating that you can get away with very little quilting and you're gonna be fine. So now we're gonna travel stitch a little bit, get to the corner and start swinging around with our wiggly U-shapes to finish off the block. All right, so I've got this little teardrop and then I've got this row of wiggly U-shapes. So I'm basically just going to stitch the teardrop into that area, swing down and around, hit that point, and then rotate and start stitching my wiggly U-shapes. And you wanna go with the direction that feels most comfortable for you. I like left to right. It feels like writing uh, words on paper to me, but that might feel very different for you. So keep that in mind. And this is just kind of a review of something we learned in block number one. It's just that back and forth, soft curves. And we're gonna take this all around the block. And the nice thing about it is you don't have to break thread between these. Just simply stitch right up to that corner with these wiggles, stitch your teardrop, rotate and keep stitching. You're gonna flow all the way around the block and then it'll be done. So that's it for stitching wiggly pasta in our nine patch block. You know, this is one of those designs that's very forgiving because you're overlapping your stitching line. You know, you can get away with a lot of mistakes and stitch it completely freehand and there's no worry about it. So I encourage you not to mark it, stitch it freehand, let it flow through that block and you're gonna learn loads about moving through this area and you're gonna learn loads also about the feel of freehand quilting versus stitching on a marked line. And you know, these overlapping designs, uh, Wiggly Pasta's an overlapping design. They're very forgiving. You can find a lot more of this type of design on the Free Motion Quilting Project. Uh, there's a lot more of those and they're beginner level. They're pretty much all beginner level and they're all perfectly designed for hiding mistakes. So even if you stitch one little element or one little place wrong, well, you know what? You're going to overlap it so many times, no one's going to be able to tell. So definitely check out overlapping designs on freemotionproject.com. And of course, this has been a video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. Pick up your copy of the Building Blocks Quilt Pattern and join us as we learn how to piece and free motion quilt together. Pick up your pattern at leahday.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.